Welcome back again. This is Dale with Computer Aftercare, and today I'm going to show you how to run malware scans or virus scans with Microsoft Security Essentials, or MSE for short. Anyways, if you haven't already installed it, you can go to the Get Started section, and there's a brief video there that shows you an easy way to install it. Anyways, here's the icon. It's already installed in this computer. That's the desktop icon, and you'll also see the tray icon down here. When everything's fine, it's up to date, you'll see that it's green with this little check mark. If you were to right click it, you'll see the only thing you can really do to it is just open it. That's the same thing as coming over here and double clicking it. It's a very stripped down program, not many features, but it is very effective. Anyways, right now you can see that the real time protection is on and the virus and spyware definitions are up to date. And one of the things I do want to show you is that if you do need to update it, you can come over here to the update tab and just click update. Now it should be doing this for you automatically, but if for some reason it missed an update or you had an internet connection problem and uh, now you've restored it and you need to run it manually, just go ahead and click update. You can also go here to your history tab and this is where you can check to see the items that it's detected and what might be in quarantine so you can manage it from here. And right now I actually have nothing in here and then there's the settings here you can go to schedule your scans I suggest that you at a minimum schedule a quick scan to be run say daily it, it really only takes a few minutes to run and you can schedule it at a time when your computer might be sitting idle say at lunchtime possibly and as I showed you before we'll leave this box checked so that it checks for your updates automatically and uh, especially before running a scan and I leave these two unchecked so that I don't have uh, as many performance problems during normal operation. And you can go over here down the list here and you can customize it if you like, but for the most part there's nothing you need to do in these settings. I mean you can just go ahead and install it and just run it with your default settings and that's usually adequate for most people. But uh, if it did detect anything you can set the alert levels what you want it to do. You know if you receive something that's a high alert level a very dangerous infection you can tell it to go ahead and take the recommended action or to just straight up remove or quarantine it. Real-time protection that's what most antivirus programs provide for you they're active programs they're constantly scanning in the background all the time now the only time I would ever recommend to turn this off is if say you were installing a major Windows update, a service pack, or some program that the antivirus program might interfere with. So you might actually have to come over here and temporarily turn this off. Just like that. And you'll see that the computer goes, or their screen goes to red, and the icon down here, it turns red, telling you that there's an issue. But you can go back right here and turn it right back on. I periodically do this. And then there's some excluded files and folder locations. I have some programs because of the nature of my work that sometimes get picked up as false positives or Trojans because of the kind of programs they are. Now, if you didn't want those to get deleted from your antivirus program uh, when it's just doing its background or, or on demand scans, you can just come here and browse to a folder and then you can come and select it. Like I have some stuff in my Dropbox I don't want to get picked up, so I'll click OK. And then you can come over here and add it. And then save changes. Accept user account control. And that's that. This folder here will not get scanned. And there, then there's actually files. If you want to click certain file types that you don't want to, to have scanned, you can type the file extension in here. Now this would be pretty risky, but just for example, say you didn't want EXE files to be scanned, you can actually add that and then save the changes, but I'm not going to do that. And as I showed you during the installation video, uh, particularly if you have Windows XP, if you have a process that might be consuming a lot of RAM and it's slowing down your computer, in this case one that's within Microsoft Security Essentials itself, you can browse to where that particular file is or process and in this case it was this one in here and then you can select it here and then add it and then you'll see it appear here and save changes and you have a few more advanced settings 
Uh, this one by default's not checked, but if you pretty much use flash drives or external drives all the time, I would suggest that you check this box to scan removable drives when you insert them so that uh, when you have a, an item that might have an auto run virus on it, hopefully it's going to catch it because removable drives are known for getting auto run viruses on them sometimes. And then there's maps. If you're using the uh, Microsoft Active Protection Service to uh, report malware to uh, Microsoft, you can basically join if you want. If you don't want to have your computer sending information to Microsoft, you can just click here that you don't want it and you can just click Save Changes. Now that's pretty much it as far as the settings. As far as scanning, it's very easy to do. Uh, quick scans, if you want to run a, an on-demand scan, not one that's just scheduled automatically, you can just select click and click scan now. Now if you notice your icon turns red here and it is up to date, occasionally that's because you had not run a scan in a little while and usually it's going to tell you that. So what you can do to make that icon go back to green is to just run a quick scan. Or you can actually run a full scan. Uh, I would suggest you do this during dinner or overnight or sometime when you have a, a good one to two hours to run a full scan of your hard drive. And that's pretty much it. Uh, whatever it's going to find, it's going to remove for you or it's going to ask you an action to take and uh, you'll see the windows that will prompt you what to do. And when all said and done, if it has picked up anything, I suggest you go look at the history and see what's in here, see where the threats were located and uh, at some point you might want to go ahead and purge your quarantine items and go down here and remove them and you might have to check these different boxes to see different types of items and last but not least whenever you download files from the internet it's very easy just to run a scan on that file that you downloaded it just takes a few seconds it's very quick so there's no need not to do it so I'm just going to pick a file here in my documents folder. Say I wanted to scan this folder right here. I can just right click it and you're going to see this in your context menu. Scan with Microsoft Security Essentials. So go ahead and do that and then you can see right away it, it's completed the scan already. Scan completed on eight items. No threats were detected. So that's how quick it is to do a right click scan with your context menu and you can do that with files and folders. Anyways, that's pretty much all I wanted to show you about how to run malware and virus scans with MSE. I hope you enjoyed the video. This is Dale with Computer Aftercare. Thank you and bye-bye.